stretching north and south of the equator in West Africa are vast areas of dense forests and swamplands as yet unexplored by white men. A virgin territory penetrated only by the great Congo River and its tributaries. Here in this wild, steaming portion of the dark continent is the home of the Ponga, native name for the gorilla. It was here on the fringe of gorilla territory in a nameless native village inhabited by a tribe of fierce Negritos, an incident occurred which was destined to startle the civilized world.
I saw her. Isn't there any hope for him, Doc? I'm afraid not. He's just too weak to fight jungle fever. I don't know how he managed to travel as far as he did. Do you think you can keep him alive till Sir Harry arrives? I expect him any day. I don't know, Van. I'm doing everything I can. I know you are, but... But if Sir Harry could only hear the astonishing things he said, it would mean so much. The man is delirious. You don't actually believe he saw a white girl, do you? Oh, yes, I do. It's the fever. No, Doc. There must be some truth behind the stories those hunters brought back from the interior. About a white girl attacking the natives? Yes, sir. Poppycock. Some drunken trader probably saw it coming out of a bottle of bourbon. That's what I thought until Gunderson showed up. Wait till Sir Harry arrives and I'll let you in on an amazing discovery. Come in. Boss! Boats come. That must be Sir Harry. Keep a close watch on our patients. Righto, but you better hurry. We haven't much time. Thank you, Peter. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. Greetings to you, Sir Harry, old friend. The same to you, friend, old chap. <laughs> my secretary, Mr. Carville. Carville, this is Peter Van Dorn, one of my oldest and dearest friends. How do you do? How do, you do? Oh, the belly blasted its sparrow, blew up the blinking spout. Then the belly blasted rain came down and drove the blight around. <laughs> Back. Peter, old boy, glad to see you. I haven't time to explain, but there's a man dying at my home who holds the key to the most amazing anthropological discovery of the century. Would you mind coming along right away? Let's go. Let's attend to the unloading. Immediately, sir. Come, Pam. Carbo. Gorillas. But a baby gorilla in its arms. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. What does he mean, the white gorilla? It means that the missing link between man and monkey is not a myth. This unfortunate man saw it. Come with me and I'll show you what he brought back from the jungle. And the old white man who saved Gunderson from death at the hands of the Negritos was the doctor who had accompanied Dr. Friedrich Dierdorf's ill-fated expedition. Dr. Dierdorf? What an amazing story. But, but the white gorilla, what basis do you have for calling him the missing link? I was coming. This box contains Dr. Friedrich Dierdorf's personal diary, given to Gunderson by his rescuer. Here, my friends, is the unmistakable proof of the existence of the missing link. A strange piece of semen characteristics but with the faculty of almost human celebration. You mean a gorilla with human intelligence? A low grade of intelligence. Dr. Friedrich Theodor proved it by applying the standard mentality test. My word, the old chap must have been a bit cracked to be asking a monkey to size IBCs. Hmm. Cracked or not, Theodor's experiments might very well prove the Darwinian theory. I would certainly enjoy the acclaim which will go to the man who takes the missing link back to civilization. Oh, father. I've been hoping you'd say that, Sir Harry. By Jove, it's worth having a go at it. Good. We'll be passing through gorilla territory anyhow. Well, if you ask me, the whole thing's a hoax, just monkey business. Well, nobody's going to ask you, Carswell. Gunderson is dead. It now becomes our obligation to follow through where he left off. Well, I can't see what good can come from finding a white monkey. Besides, the jungle's no place for a girl like you. 
meaning you're beginning to regret that you ever left London, eh, what? Oh, it isn't that. It's just that I can't help thinking of all the needless dangers you'll have to encounter. Oh, I love excitement, Clive. You seem to have forgotten that I was born on a safari. However, if you'd rather return to London, I'm sure Father will understand. Oh, Sam, you know, being with you makes up for all this comfort. All right, come on, get that over there. Come on, let's get moving here. Good morning, Hans. Good morning, Herr Brando. Hans, I want you to meet the leader of our expedition, Sir Harry Brack. I am honored, mine Commandant. Well, thank you. I'm pleased that Van Dorn was able to engage a man with your qualifications to guide us. My daughter, Miss Pamela. How do you do? The pleasure is mine, Fräulein. My secretary, Carlo. How do you do, sir? And Baxter. Hello. Now, Hans, if you'll point out our canoes, we'll throw our luggage aboard. Yes, Coming, me. Here's the boss man. Number one boss man. Savvy? Savvy. Me, number one porter boy. You show boss man to canoe. We don't know. Follow number one porter boy. You will follow me. I will show you to your canoe. as if he might have been a gentleman at some time. Well, it takes more than a shave to make a gentleman. Right-o. But I'm afraid your definition of a gentleman and mine are quite different.
about this point, if we pack in through the jungle, we come to a trail over the mountains that'll save us over 150 miles of water transport. By Jove, that'll save a lot of time, too. Nice going, Hans. You've been over that trail before, Hans? Twice, sir. Now, about here, we come to a point... Why you shave every day when none of the other guards do? It's habit, miss. A hangover from my years in His Majesty's service. You see service in the World War? My father did. No, ma'am. I, uh, you were London on the No, ma'am. Are you, uh, a remittance man? No, ma'am. You're presuming too much, Bishop. Your employment as rifleman doesn't entitle you to any social privileges. I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again. Speaking of presumption, your position as secretary to my father doesn't give you the right to choose to whom I may talk. Well, he's so obviously beneath you, Pam. Mr. Bishop did not presume anything. I talk to him, and I'll do so again whenever and wherever I please. And if I were you, I wouldn't presume too much upon his good nature. It might prove uh, rather awkward. And how far from the mountains is that Negrito village? About 200 miles northeast as the crow flies, about there. We're about ready to shove off, my dear. Are all your things stowed aboard? Well, yes, Father, but, uh... But what? Well, I was wondering if I could have Bishop for my personal guard instead of Stringer. Very well. You shall have Bishop. Take care of it, Hans. Yes. I hope Stringer hasn't been discourteous to you. Oh, not at all, Major. Well, I've been observing the way Bishop does things, and... Well, I feel he's more capable. I quite agree with you, my dear. You've been promoted, Bishop. From rear guard to personal guard for Furlan Braggart. On whose orders? By the Furlan. You're a fast worker, my friend. You're crazy. I haven't spoken two words to the girl. Besides, I like my present beauty. Don't be dumb, girl. If you play your cards right, you've got a chance to marry a fortune. I'm satisfied. Anything you say, but... You're her guard, so get aboard a canoe. I like being made the goat while you punish an ardent admirer. Mr. Carswell doesn't interest me. That's what you mean. I don't think you're capable of being interested in anything but yourself. You're very rude. And very uncouth. Also a congenital liar. Besides, I'm a positive bounder where women are concerned. Most women.
which you may call the so further commercial is I see. Good. This is the village we've been seeking. I told the chief who were just passing through to hunt the white gorilla. He said the white gorilla had killed one of his warriors. Ask him about the old white man who gave the diary to Gunderson. I'm afraid that wouldn't be wise, mine here. It might make them more suspicious of us than they are. So what do you propose? I'll ask the chief if he'll allow us to camp here for a few days to rest and do some trading. And if the old white man is still here, he'll seek us. Quite right, Han. We bow to your better judgment. Guadalajara, fora com vos, a la plage, la potumba. Osa, que bem que eu vi o meu matar, with this. The chief says we can stay here long enough to do some trading, but we can't camp in the village. Unsociable old devil, isn't he? Well, I can't say I blame the old boy. He's probably had good reason for it. Have the porters break out some of the cotton goods and trinkets. Yes, sir. Mumbo Jumbo, come in, me. For a cola, the latage, the tumbaga. Come in, sir. Let me see what you're doing here. Let me see what you're doing Definitely. Do you think he's the man we are looking for? There's only one way to find out. How do you do, sir? How do you do? And whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? Oh, I'm Sir Harry Bragdon, Royal Society of Explorers. And this is Peter Van Dorn, my good friend and noted anthropologist. Why, this is indeed a pleasure. For I'm quite familiar with your contributions to science. Uh, perhaps you are familiar with the works of my former colleague, Dr. Frederick Deodorf. Why, Dr. Deodorf was responsible for our coming here. Or perhaps I should say his diary. Why, then, then Gunderson got back alive. Yes, but he died of jungle fever a few days after he reached Mojave. You said the diary has brought you here. Is it your intention to search for the missing link? Yes, and we need your help. Come with me. <laughs> Sorry, I have no chairs to offer you. But if you don't mind the floor, I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, not at all. Quite all right. My name doesn't matter. I was the anthropologist who accompanied the ill-fated Deodorf expedition. Uh, uh, anyhow, Deodorf was my friend, and I stuck by him after the others had been arrested. And I was a witness to his murder by the missing link. Doctor, we are very anxious to know what you have in this bag. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I was going to show you some photos I made. I was afraid to entrust them. Gunderson. Now, yeah, now that is Dr. Frederick Theodore. In my opinion, one of the world's greatest anthropologists. They are the members of the expedition with a portion of our permanent camp in Gorilla Territory. Do you suppose there's any part of their camp still standing? Hardly. After 10 years, it was a constant fight then to keep the jungle out. These photographs are priceless, Doctor. We'll guard them with our lives. Well, there are others there showing the missing link reacting to some intelligent tests we made, which you can study at your leisure. But this one shows him full grown. 
at five years. Just a few weeks before he broke out of his cage and murdered Deodorov. We are deeply indebted to you, Doctor. Isn't there something we can do for you in return? Perhaps on our return, you'd like to go back to civilization with us. No, I'd rather not. My life on this earth is growing short, and my mission, if you can call it such, is about finished. Now, uh, this map will guide you to Deirdre's camp, and I'd advise you to rebuild it and use it as base of all future activity. <laughs> Otherwise, you may traverse the entire length and breadth of the Congo and never catch sight of a single gorilla. I assume from your suggestion that Dr. Deodorf used some methods to lure the gorillas into his camp. Oh, yes. His method was quite simple. He discovered that the medium plant was a choice food for the gorilla. And so he planted it all around his camp. You'll find some photos of the medium in those. Here you are, Mother. If you don't want it for a Kamara, you can use it for bathroom care. I don't know about that plan, but I'm going to keep the eyes on Whenever you give the word. Oh, the sooner the better. Just what I was going to recommend, my hair. These Negritos are not very friendly. The chief and his witch doctor might be planning to ambush us from the camp of the night. Look over there. What would you advise, Hans? Continuous travel day and night to you at least 50 miles from the village. Excellent suggestion, Hans. Where's Miss Pamela? She and her cows well are down by the river. We'll get everything ready to leave immediately. Yes, sir.
loose snatch about 40 winks. I'll gladly keep watch. I'm not tired. I'm used to long watching. If you change your mind, let me know. Track. Go him that way. I believe these are fresh tracks. We ought to follow them. What do you think, Hans? Why not clear out of space and set up a temporary camp? Then if you wish to do some exploring, you'll have a base to operate from. You are right again, Hans. My enthusiasm ran away with me. <laughs> I'm glad somebody still has enthusiasm. I'm afraid I lost mine crossing that swamp. Very well, Hans. Let's camp here. Perhaps a good rest will give my morale a little. An animal cage. Good going, Bishop. This must be the spot. Blighters. Now all we've got to do is plant medium all around the plate and onto the cover. Yes, and pray for the white gorilla to get hungry, eh? If it worked for Dr. Deodorff, it'll work for us. In spite of your skeptical I was only joking. How do we know if the trap is sprung if we're inside the stockade? By means of a slight improvement by Baxter over the Deodorff model. Now you see that there bell up there? Now just by way of a demonstration, if you'll all step aside, I'll show you how it goes. First, we hook this in here. Here's your gorilla. <laughs> Comes along and gets a whiff of the men job. <laughs> <laughs> so we up to the windfall to wet his appetite. <laughs> and being a greedy blinder, he eats his way right up to the trap. <laughs> well, there's a whole bunch of it out in the center. So, he steps right out there to see what he can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you see out west, Miss Pamela? It looks like the Baxter invention is a blooming success. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit like a blooming success. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for making a blasted monkey me. Take your time, take your time. They won't be back for hours yet. All right. Beautiful night. What do you say, Webb? Would you like a chance to win back the 20 shillings I took from you last night? Sure, I'd like to have revenge. How about you, Bishop? Some other time. I don't feel lucky tonight. You can count me in hand, so I might as well lose my money to you. I have no place to spend it. Good night, Miss Hanley. You're not playing fair with me, Pam. What do you mean? Well, ever since we've been in Africa, you've been treating me like a stranger. Well, I'm afraid it's your fault, Clive. I've rather resented your presented attitude. But you know I love you. And I'm very fond of you. Well, please don't mistake my friendship for more than it was intended. Oh, I see. Let's be good friends. What do you say? Well, what can I say? Good night, Clive.
yourself, dear. What's the matter? I just saw a huge beast looking in at me through the window. There's nothing out there, Pamela. Oh, but it was there. I saw it. A huge beast with flaming eyes. Control yourself, my dear. You were probably having a nightmare. Oh, no, Father. I was wide awake. It was real. But no jungle beast could get over our stockade wall. No? Couldn't a, a gorilla? <laughs> now I know you are dreaming. Gorillas are not climbing beasts. Sir Harry! Sir Harry! Oh, there's nothing wrong. Pamela was dreaming she saw a gorilla looking in her window. And it was so realistic she woke up screaming. <laughs> Bishop, you'd better take a look around. Uh, Stringer, Webb, check the back fence. Okay. I didn't intend to disturb you. Please sit down. After you, ma'am. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Why should anyone observe the social niceties here? This isn't civilization. It's the jungle. A man shouldn't forget to pay his respects to a charming lady even in the jungle, Miss Beck. Oh. It's only a reminder that I'm not in you. Stop addressing me as Miss Bragdon. I'm Pamela. And here. Answer me, Bishop. Why didn't you strike Carvo? I'm sorry, sir. I must have lost my temper. Go on. Why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him how I find her in your arms and you're kissing her? I resent such presumption, Bishop. You were engaged as a rifleman, not to make love to my daughter. I must have lost my head. I'm sorry, sir. You've lost my confidence and respect. If it were possible, I'd send you back to Mojave. But, Father, it was all my fault. I... I'll talk to you later. Go to your room. But, Father... Tamara, in the morning, I shall appoint a more trustworthy guard for my daughter. And if you so much as speak to her again... I'll have you put under arrest. Understand? Yes, sir. By Jove, we've tapped her. Well, we caught the girl in all right, but not your vice man. I'm satisfied the trap works. That gives me hope. What are you going to do with it? Shoot it? Don't be an idiot. If we kill him, all our efforts will be wasted. We'll never have another gorilla come near the place. Baxter, put the ladder down for him. Right, sir. We'll give him a chance to get out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, Cap. I want to talk to you, Han. What's on your mind? Well, I'm fed up with this. I'm sick of wasting my time trying to find a white monkey. So? You tell me that you had a definite purpose in joining this expedition. Supposing I have. Well, I'd, I'd like to throw in with you if there's a chance. Without knowing my objective? Well, anything would be better than this. If you throw in with us, there can be no backing out, understand? And if we fail, you'll risk being hanged with the rest of us. Well? I'll do anything if I can take Pamela with me. Oh, I don't know about that. I hadn't figured on taking a woman along. Suppose she objects to going with you. Well, suppose the Harry objects to your plans. That isn't going to stop you, is it? You can take her, but she'll be your responsibility. All right. Good, I can tell you our plans now. I know where there's a fabulous gold field. And by borrowing Herr Bragdon Safari, we can bring out enough of the shiny metal to make us richer than the Bank of England. I'm with you all the way. Come with me. This is an outrage. I shall spend every penny I possess to prosecute you, criminal. Out and off will be then, Sir Harry. It's best to bargain with the blighters. Carswell, I would never have thought you'd be an accessory to this criminal venture. You must be mad. Shut up. Tie them up. Mumbo Jumbo. Maraco Dunga. Maraganga. My friends, we are taking all the guns and supplies with us. But if you make no attempt to follow, we will leave a cache on the riverbank a two-day trek from here. With care, it will be sufficient to get you back to Mojave. But if you attempt to follow, we will leave nothing. Come on, Pam, you're coming with us. Oh, no, I'm not. How dare you, you insolent young bounder. Don't be a fool, Carswell. You're arse going to get your blue neck scratched. You coming, Pam? No, I'm not. All right, Mumbo Jumbo. Bring the Fräulein with us. Bart man says, come you. Don't you dare touch me. Maraca has to go now. Can I go to the back of the house? I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. Bravo, Bishop. Nice going, Bishop, old boy. Now, if we only had some guns, we could take off to the blinders and turn the tables on them. If we only had some cartridges. Perhaps we'll soon have both. Sure, Kruger is going to leave them for us on the riverbank. You didn't really believe that, did you? Didn't you? My dear fellows, Kruger can't possibly afford for us to get out of here alive. Do you really mean he is cold-blooded enough to leave us stranded without food or guns? It wouldn't be the first time, Van Doren. You seem to know quite a bit about Herr Kruger. It's part of my job. I'm afraid I'm not quite what I seem. You see, I joined your safari under orders from the Rhodesian Secret Service. About 18 months ago, the bodies of a party of prospectors were found in the bush. Each man shot through the head. We discovered they had hired a guide. The guide's body wasn't there. I can only tell you, gentlemen, that the description of the guide fits Kroger very well. Further, it was established there were two other members of the original party, riflemen, hired by the same guide. Their bodies weren't there either. Webman Stringer. Very possible. Yes, but what are we going to do for guns and supplies? I've taken care of that. Bishop, I owe you an apology. There isn't time for that now. Every minute that Pamela's with Kroger, she's in danger. If you'll take command, we'll follow you. Good enough. Come on.
small for a lion. It would be very foolish to attempt it. He might become the prey of some wild beast. Mumbo Jumbo, Maraca and Seguga. The police here. Come back to the room. I said all aboard. But you promised to leave food and guns on the bank for Father and the others. I've changed my mind, Fräulein. But you've got to. If you don't, they'll starve to death. It's either their lives or mine, Fräulein, and I believe in self-preservation. Clive, you can't let him do this. It's the same as murder. She's right. It would be murder. You've got to give them a fighting chance. Shut up! I don't want any advice from you. I'll ask for it. I'll get aboard, both of you. Come! British spunk in you. But when I give orders, you've got to learn to obey them. Now get up, Fräulein. I have no more time to waste. Oswald was dead when we reached him. So we hurried on after Kogar. There was no sign of him or Miss Dragon. Then all of a sudden we heard the savage roar of a jungle beast. And Kogar cries for help. Then Miss Dragon screaming. We finally found him. Kogar had been killed by a huge gorilla who was holding Miss Dragon in his arms. 
and he was a white gorilla. Look like some lion found Kroger's body during the night. Yes. Gorilla tracks. From now on, we'll have to be careful not to overlook any sign. We'll probably find lots of those tracks, but the deeper ones we'll have to follow. The white gorilla was carrying over 100 pounds of extra weight. Come on.
Don't shoot to kill. I certainly hope his disposition improves. He doesn't seem at all pleased with the fame that's coming his way. Well, the blinking missing link is all ready to go bye-bye. And we've gathered enough men to feed him for a year. Well, I can hardly wait until we get back to London. I know a couple of anthropologists who will get the surprise of their lives when we exhibit him. Do you really think he's a missing link between man and monkey? I am convinced that he is. 